Welcome to Home Symphony, welcome to this artist conversation. Here today with me, my guests, Maria Merovic and Sergei Nakariako. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for inviting us. It's our second time uh, performing together. We performed together two years ago. Um, how did you find the orchestra? Well, first of all, um, it's very enthusiastic, which is... Uh, which you feel immediately and um, the young orchestras um, they are much different from the orchestras that are really settled and uh, it's joyful actually they react on everything and uh, we we understand each other so that's the most important thing i mean from last time to this last time it was our second season yeah. um, so two years passed now uh, the group is a bit changed different, uh, it's, yes. it's a different group we, we got a lot of uh, but the conductor is the same. The conductor is so, the same. Uh, the conduct Hope he evolved a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the conductor is still nice. So uh, somehow the group follows. That's important. You guys uh, met uh, 11 years ago, I know? Or, yeah. or am I wrong? Uh, yes, that's correct. In 2003, okay. we played uh, for the first time together. It was a replacement concert. And uh, I was looking for another pianist, and uh, then I called an, a friend of mine, a wonderful pianist, Alexander Markovich, and he said that uh, unfortunately he cannot play, so he proposed uh, me to play that concert with uh, a wonderful pianist Maria Mirovich. So this is how it happened. Everything and happened. Still, I don't understand how, how it's everything how it went. Now, no. yes. But um, so. You have regularly concerts, uh, you play regularly in duo. Um, how many concerts per year you spend together? How much time together you spend per year? You know, I don't like him so much, you know, that's... <laughs> I don't know how we manage, I don't know. It's, um, it, it depends, it depends. Sometimes there are concerts that you know in a row and we have tours. And sometimes it's just uh, one happening, you know, in a month or in two months. It depends on. Uh, from the, the from the piano playing part, um, is there a difference playing with um, a string player or playing with a wind instrument? Or what? How do you have to adjust, or is, is it just depending on if it's a good musician or not? It's a question that I've been uh, actually asked before many times. Uh, for me personally, there is no. There is no difference because I find it's not important what instrument you play. Ad either you're a singer, either you're... Well, we try to sing anyway, no? A singer or a trumpet player or a clarinet or violinist. Um, for me, as long as you are a, a musician, then and we breathe the same way. So it doesn't the really... The most important as an orchestra, I think, um, it's always important for the other because we have so many different instruments. Absolutely. And everyone has to adjust to the other. Absolutely. So they have to know if they have the whole brass section, the strings can't play right away. Absolutely. They have to breathe like a brass section. Yes. You have to you have to breathe together and like this you have uh, uh, the same timing. Exactly. Which is uh, very important and probably the most important, I think, in, in life. The right timing. The right timing the right and everything. Timing. Yeah, it's very wise words. <laughs> the timing is the most precious. Yes, precious. And uh, uh, also when, when to say what and how. Yes. And how many seconds to wait. You can only feel this. You don't. It's hard to explain it's hard, that. It's, it's not impossible. to explain. Just, uh, but you know it as well, I'm sure, that uh, we are talking about the same thing. So. We perform in this concert two pieces. Uh, three but uh, two pieces with you guys um, uh, one is um, Shostakovich piano concerto number one for um, trumpet piano and orchestra and the other is um, Haydn cello concerto C major for flugelhorn how does this happen well first of all we'll see how it will happen <laughs> <laughs> no how does it happen that you come to play uh, cello concerto um at some point, I started to look together with my father when I was still traveling with my father and my father taught me for many years and still when I uh, visit my father and uh, we have lessons together. Um, many years ago, we started to look for more music than just trumpet music and uh, he started to have some ideas, uh, something from vocal repertoire 
something from you strings. Some arias? Some arias, yes, I've played many. Uh, some uh, leader, mm -hmm. some pieces written for s string instruments, uh, other wind instruments, clarinet, bassoon, and uh, oboe. Uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of from French horn. And in, in, in 93, I discovered for the first time flugelhorn. Of course, I knew what it was, but I didn't have one. So in 93, I f finally I got my first flugelhorn, but there was no music written for it, almost nothing. And my father started to, to get some ideas about it, and this... Uh, uh, church, 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 it works! <laughs> and, uh, and many, many other things also. So, of course, uh, that opened uh, a lot of possibilities. And this uh, Shostakovich Piano Concerto is one of my favorite pieces. Well, of course, trumpet has very little to play, but... Um, really, uh, it's so well written, and uh, I can also enjoy listening to the piano. The piano. <laughs> to the piano. And um, from from a point of view of the repertoire, you actually enhanced the trumpet and uh, flugelhorn repertoire um, in a way that before was never imagined. Uh, or were there other players that uh, that played violin concerto and trumpets before you? Have there been? Well, my father has arranged many pieces which were not played before on trumpet or flugelhorn, but uh, I'm definitely not the first to arrange for trumpet. There was Maurice André, of mm -hmm. course, who has uh, played a lot of baroque music written for other instruments, like oboe, for example, or violin. And uh, of course, there was the legendary Timofey Dokshitsa, mm -hmm. um, the trumpet player who inspired me from my very beginnings on trumpet and who played many uh, violin music and vocal music and of course all this was very inspiring to me and um, I'm in a way continuing expanding um, the trumpet literature of course a lot with the help of my father who did really um, we're playing also his arrangement now yes this Haydn C major cello concerto as well as many other things and uh, well Shostakovich is one of our main things for trumpet. Uh, for trumpet, yes. Uh, for trumpet. From the Not core the of repertoire. Yes. And for trumpet, well, pianists cannot complain about the lack of music, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, that's true. That's which, which are the next project or which uh, concerto you would like um, to ha enter in the trumpet repertoire? Um, there are some ideas. Uh, some pieces have been recorded, but I haven't been able so far for different reasons to bring it on stage. Um, let's say there is also the Haydn D, ma D major cello concerto that I've already played a couple of times, but I would like to play it more often. Uh, and some other pieces also. It's, 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 it's uh, it yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, this will be more, more to come. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, um, recording some. P you said some pieces were recorded. Um, are there pieces um, that work only on recording? Uh, when you record, um, there is this. Um, um, possibility to stop and rest if you if one is tired not during a live performance obviously so that's the difference but at the same time uh, emotionally it's not the same feeling when you don't have the audience and when you're just sitting alone in a recording room and uh, um, with this uh, red lamp by the way I always ask to Switch it not off. to use it because it yeah. makes me nervous. <laughs> this <laughs> you know, and then oh. now or never. <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. I don't like this feeling. So it's 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 not quite the same. So, but again, um, when I rehearse, sometimes we were talking before about perfect moments. Sometimes those perfect moments for the musician, uh, they don't come. Unfortunately, the day of the concert, they may happen maybe the day before, the day after, but still I, uh, I cherish those moments even if they don't happen during concerts because at least I did experience that and it's important, it's just uh, very alive and it's never the same, it changes. Luckily. Yes. Luckily it's never the same. Making music uh, should be like this, no? Ne never the same. Yes, well that's at least my case. <laughs> A very difficult case, but uh, but I don't know. I think it's uh, some people can think more than feel, maybe you know, and that helps them to to be able to repeat. Can think you know, more than think feel. More. Yeah, I mean they have their own uh, planning, let's say you know, and like this they can uh, 
play more concerts mm -hmm. and uh, some of them say I'm not nervous anymore it's because you know there are so many concerts and they have their you know just plan what to do exactly during this particular piece it's not my case it's very uh, for me it's very difficult I try to give myself every single time mm -hmm. like when I play yes and you get very fast uh, exhausted mm -hmm. but uh, at least you are honest Yes. You know that you you've tried to give what you felt on this moment. I find also it's very difficult always when you take a piece that you already know very well and yeah. you play it a thousand times. I, I try always when when I take such a piece to somehow like put uh, when you have new shoes. Yeah. No, not to put Absolutely. it in old shoes because Absolutely. then it's already large. Mm. So also also traditions. Uh, very often we say this is a tradition, um, but. What is exactly a tradition? How does it come to a tradition? And um, are we sure that are we still making a tradition, or maybe we are already in the point of the parody of the tradition? Um, this where it's a where very good I question. think every generation, or let's say every generation of musicians, ha I mean, it's normal because life changes. So we try to add something to what we had before, and uh, we have the the luggage, the knowledge. And plus, we are searching for something new. That's, so that's I a think great it's thing. I we have think YouTube. Together. We have we have no. As you yeah, say, we exactly. have such a huge opportunity of um, learning and and yeah. still. Where? How do you find of all all this broad? Exactly how we we, we say we, we have the chance to to really um, experience music on such a level that other musicians before us, other generation, couldn't didn't have or yeah. couldn't have because just was not available. Yeah. How w does one find still an his own approach, a new way? Or I think it becomes more and more difficult uh, because you, you see also, uh, first of all, there are uh, more musicians now than it was before. Yes. Um, and by the way, more audience. Be because we always say the audience is getting less and less, but actually um, audience is just spreading. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. It's just a lot of more uh, possibilities for people. You have, of course, museums. You have uh, uh, classical music concerts. You have a lot of possibilities. And just uh, before, there was one orchestra per city or two maximum. And nowadays, touring everything. So, just by the way, there yeah, is yeah. more and more audience. Also, also thanks to the youth concerts of yeah. orchestras. But in a way, it's um, it's a, it's a different. Uh, we are living in in. in different times. It, it will always be like this. It was like this and it will always be like this. Um, I've heard a very nice uh, interview with David Stern, with the son of uh, mm -hmm. Isaac Stern, and it was about uh, uh, fantastic violinist Mr. Ivory Gitlis. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually said that at the time when Gitlis was young, there were others like his father, let's say, and then it was Heifetz, you know, Heifetz, and then it was, uh, I don't know, Milstein, Milstein you know, the uh, Oyster, whoever. And then um, there were few concerts. But let's say you would come to the Carnegie Hall, and one day there will be, uh, I don't know, Heifetz, who would play Tchaikovsky concerto. And the whole audience would believe this is the only Tchaikovsky concerto and it should have been played exactly this way because it was so convincing, so powerful. Then let's say a week later there will be Isaac Stern who comes and plays exactly the same Tchaikovsky concerto and the whole audience would say wow! Even though it was this, different. It was totally different. So in a way uh, we have many musicians and we hear more things but I think there are also less uh, personalities now. I than think before. than before because people didn't have this possibility to listen to all you know this information and in a way they had to develop themselves yeah. what they felt and they had uh, really their life experience I don't say now it's not like this but they had life experience to put into their music more because they didn't have all this media around you so know you, you, you think that the chance of, way of, of young musicians that um, is on one side a chance of having a lot of access Informa information yeah. but on the other hand um, we are not anymore so original but we are just more uh, picking what we like and build like this our own taste I just want to say that it's mu it became much more, more difficult I think I think it became much more difficult really to uh, to express yourself in in your own way because you you see there are 
you see that the standard is so high now, you know, so everybody tries to reach this standard. But sometimes we are missing our, you know, what we have to discover inside ourselves. Yeah. Because there is so much information, you know, so we know what the standard is. But it still, you know, in a way it maybe disturbs to build up your own. It, you really, not at the same time, as it was before, you know, maybe the lifestyle also was different. Maybe, I don't know, but I, I find it's, uh, in a way, it's also more difficult, you know, more difficult to find yourself between so many good musicians because yeah. everybody knows what the level is now. Speaking of level, um, standard, trumpet is, uh, I mean, piano also, but it's, it's a very... How you say? Mm, I don't know how to express it right. Um, it's very critical. This delicate, delicate, delicate yes. is the right word. How how do you uh, manage um, to get along with pressure and with uh, with then delivering? Or is this actually a part of your thoughts, or you just say I don't care and I just think about music? I think uh, like with any instrument uh, and with any profession in general, it's hard to do something really well. So, and, uh, li and like with any instrument, one has to be careful and very delicate because pianists can over-practice, trumpet players can over-practice, singers uh, can get really heavy problems uh, with the voice and so on and so forth and string players. So one just has to know what's good and what's not really to respect uh, your instrument whether it's fingers or lips or uh, the vocal cords and uh, one has to be professional to about it to listen to your own body somehow yes also. exactly uh, but i would like to add something else yes about what we were talking before um, so many things have been already said in music by different musicians and this is why one of the reasons why is difficult for the younger ones and, but at the same time, I think the only way to do is simply to be honest with your heart Absolutely. and to play with your heart. Absolutely. If it belongs to your heart, it doesn't matter if it maybe is, Was done, already. Or yeah, is done or maybe close to a version of somebody or uh, who played it, let's say, 100 years ago. But if it is honest to you, then it's, it's yours. And it will convince people. Absolutely, exactly. yes. And this is, at the end, the most important part. Exactly. You, you just need to play with your heart, with your soul, and uh, just love the music that you are playing. And I think that's the only way. Yeah. So what part takes the audience in a concert for you? Your heart. Uh, I'm, like I'm not sure if I understand the question What, what is the role of the audience oh, the in a concert? The audience. Oh. I think people come to... Um, well, of course, there are different uh, people in the concert hall and they come for different uh, reasons. Somebody, let's say, comes to the concert hall because they, they want to be um, surprised by some special virtuosic qualities. And somebody is there just because uh, they want to relax from the difficult day and they want to, to listen to nice music. And somebody wants to uh, experience some really strong feelings with their heart so it, it's i think it depends but my question was more related to what is the role of the audience for you i see as a performer mm. myself i'm an introvert if i i don't know if this exists in english if i'm yes, pronouncing introvert, extrovert, introvert. Um, and sometimes i feel nervous before going on stage and my only way to deal with that is being purely focused on the music on the piece so um, it depends on the day every day is different sometimes uh, i'm just so focused on what i'm doing and then the audience is there and it's it's fine that they're there <laughs> they can listen <laughs> <laughs> they they they, <laughs> they can be <laughs> yes but let's say Sometimes I have this feeling that I'm going on stage like this yes. rather than like that. Yes. In general, that's my personality. Mm -hmm. But I know many colleagues of mine and, and also playing different instruments who really get energy from being on stage. In my case, I, uh, if I feel totally exhausted, but even like this you can 
give of course, all of you, of course. All, all of yourself. And this is, for me, uh, probably a perfect feeling after concert when even though maybe I, c I can be nervous or uh, maybe uh, feel, I don't know, stressed or, but still, if, even if I'm like that, but still if I give my heart to the people in my way, the way I can, then I think it's proper way to do. But again, the personalities absolutely. are, the personalities and are and different. Do, do they somehow, does the audience bring you to the point to play better? Uh, knowing that depends there's audience? On the day, you know? it, it depends, depends on the, the day. It depends, depends on the day. On the day, So yeah. there are days where you say, oh, better just record, recording day. Today is, is, is more... Or better not to play today. today no, better not it's to not play. <laughs> wow, well, no, better not to play. It's not like, oh, maybe it's better not to play. I'm not going to play. Of course, no, well, one has uh, to play. To, yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but that's you know what I also feel is a big problem nowadays is that uh, our plannings go so far ahead that we have to decide today what we will perform in two or maybe three years even. In yes, sorry. Um, for an artist, I find this is a very big challenge because Absolutely. what will you feel like playing in, three years. in uh, February 2016, Maria? <laughs> Do you have already the idea? <laughs> I mean, seriously? What will we have for lunch? Yeah. Yes, also. <laughs> but this is, this is part of our daily life. Um, agents uh, plan this ahead and uh, festivals plan this ahead. How, how um, does it happen that you say, oh, I really don't feel like playing this concerto and you call the promoter and say, uh, what about the changing or is it absolutely not uh, happening? Well, let's say if we have a recital yes, program, then maybe yes. we might change a couple of pieces. Yeah, we decide. Uh, uh, but usually we what we propose is... Stay to what is yeah. It's even more interesting. <laughs> because for us it's for that day more convincing. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you have inspiration about the piece... Yeah. But of course, okay. if there is a fixed concerto, well, it's a responsibility. You have to, you have to go yeah. through. Yes. yes. Yes, and uh, not necessarily adding to what Sergei said, you can also be on stage like this and the audience thinks that you are perfectly in, in shape and everything, but inside everything, you know, could be so tight and you can be so nervous and maybe even not focused and not concentrated, you know, but outside not always says what's inside, you know. You know, some so manage to. Some yeah, yeah, some manage, <laughs> but but I mean, yeah, it's very nice if it's possible. But, but that's what I say. So it means that they manage to hide. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that what's on that moment inside of you, it's exactly uh, what you see outside. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, but that's also a part of our profession, because in a way we we come on stage and we are performers. So I, I find it's, it's a part of, uh, a difficult part, but it's a part of our Well, profession. the audience, uh, they don't care if they you're at the end of your tour. They, no. Yes. And no. They don't care if you're tired or you, you didn't, didn't sleep, sleep enough, well exactly. Enough, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's of course, of course, people want to, to listen and hear and your best. And have pleasure, yes, of, course, exactly. yeah. of course, of course. By, um, we, this concert, it's not only live concert uh, in, in the hall, but also live concert in the internet. Um, for you playing for, um, I think we have around 10,000 uh, watches uh, per concert, uh, more or less. So um, does it make you more nervous or it doesn't change anything? Does it, um, do you think about um, the fact that there is a um, recording, like your sound, everything has to pass through these microphones, that it, it, you don't have the second chance with normally in recording one? It's, it, recording leaves out of it and live concert is no problem because it's a live concert in the hall so actually somehow this uh, live broadcast concert is maybe more demanding or doesn't it happens what happens let's say like this well that's why it's a live concert it's a live you concert know, a live and concert. Uh, we are going to deliver our best at that, that, that moment. precise moment yeah, right. and then well the audience will happen to be there exactly <laughs> uh, what would you wish our audience uh, online we hope they will uh, enjoy it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We just can exactly. uh, hope that um, somehow they will enjoy it and they won't just listen for for, for nothing. You know? <laughs> 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 and what would you wish yourself? Um, in this concert or generally? Uh, generally. generally uh, I don't know. I guess... Um, that everybody around you are healthy. That's the most important thing. Everybody around, yes. 
loved ones for sure but uh, I would wish for everybody the same thing but uh, with uh, with the age you understand it more and more how is important that people are healthy happiness comes sometimes not just from what you experience in life but also when you are healthy it's much easier to taste it the happiness so in this um case we shall wish a uh, happy mother's day Absolutely. healthy mothers healthy audience and uh, we wish you to enjoy our concert and see you soon back on home yeah. symphony thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you very much thank you very much thank you, thank you.